And now it's time to go back to functions. Yes, we have talked about functions. We know how to create a function. We know how to pass arguments in the function and we know how to call a function. And now it's time to talk about the arguments when you work with the functions. I mean, we can argue on that. Okay, again, a poor joke, doesn't matter. So let's create a new file and I will say this is func.arg.py name of the file doesn't matter and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a simple function and the same function which we have talked about before so I'm going to create a function called add and of course this is going to add two numbers so let's say the num1 and num2 so we got these two variables and in this I don't want to do anything fancy I just want to add them so we can return num1 plus num2 our job is done and also we need to call it if you don't call it it will not work so Let's say it will return something. I'm going to put that in result and let's call that function and let's pass two values. Let's say four comma five. And we know it's going to return nine if the operation is correct. And let me just print it. Simple stuff, nothing fancy. And let's go back here and run this. So it's func arg dot py and you got the value which is nine simple stuff right now what extra we are going to look at here see this is your parameters right and you're passing some arguments here so you're passing four and five and this goes here and then you are basically adding them and then you are getting a response so we can do a few things here the first thing is what if i'm not passing any value i mean i'm passing four i'm not passing five now will this work now there's no compile time issue. I mean, there is, but then the ID is not suggesting anything. But the moment you try to run this, it will give you an error. It says add missing one required positional argument, which is num2. So it says you are passing num1, good job, but where is num2? So we have to pass that as well. Now, if a function accepts two parameters, you have to pass them. If you don't pass it, it will complain. So what I can do is, I can pass the value or we can assign a default value to num2, something like this. If you say the default value for num2 is zero, if you don't pass a value for num2, the default it will take is zero, okay? And yes, that is possible in Python and it works. You can see we got four. So that's what you're passing and this will be added with zero and that's what you got. Now this thing which we have done here is called a default arguments. Uh, you can have this default value for num1 as well. You can set it to zero. Now both have default values. And beauty is you don't have to pass values now. You can pass. You can pass zero values. You can pass one value. You can pass two values. And it will not complain. So if you don't pass a value here, if you run this, it will give you zero. But let's say if you pass one value, which is four, it will give you four. And if you pass two values here, which is four comma five, and if you run this with this, you, you will get nine and that's the beauty but yes if you pass more values than expected then it will say hey what are you doing something like this it will say we want it too and you are you're giving me three you're very generous but then we don't want it so this is the default arguments if you don't specify the value it will take the default values but let's say if you're passing three values then what if you're passing four values then what now in this scenario if you want this to work, what you can do is you can create one more function with the same name add, but it will accept four values. Something like this, you can just take this and put it here. So we got two functions, but then you need to specify num3 and num4. So this is how you specify the values. And there's one more thing. If you specify the default values for the first values, you have to also specify for the upcoming value. Otherwise it will get confused uh, if you're passing two values for which variable those values are. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the default values from here and now it will not complain. So when you pass two values, it will go for the first one. If you pass four values, it will go for the second one. Uh, this is not it for arguments. You're not specifying anything. Uh, and that's the concern. Of course, we are not adding them. We can. We can simply say plus num3, plus num4, and that will work. But there's a problem with this. The problem is with four values, it will work. For five values, then it will give you issue again. And then we'll say, okay, we don't have any function which takes five parameters or arguments. Okay, so we have to create one more. Then what if you pass 10 values? What if you pass 100 values? So those many methods or functions you have to create. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is, it doesn't matter how many values you pass, it should work with single function, something like this. I will remove this function now. Let me, refo let me remove the default values, but before I do that, I will just have that backup here and comment this. Now we are not working with default values. What we are working with is variable length arguments, okay? And 
this will work no we have to make some changes so i will remove this default values first of all and now it doesn't matter how many value you pass you need to accept it so let's say the first value is fixed right when you add two numbers the first value is always fixed the second i mean the second parameter this value can change it can be one value it can be two it can be ten it can be hundred it can be thousands how do you accept it in that scenario we can use a concept of variable in the argument so what you do is you you just use a star with a variable which means it will take this value as a tuple okay so this four will go in num one remaining values will become a tuple and go to num two fancy stuff right and i know you don't trust me first of all this operation will not work so i will return zero at this point but i want to show you something i will just print num one and I'm going to print num2 to show you how those things look like. So clear, run, and you can see the first value is 4. The next three values are in the tuple. Now, once you got the tuple, you can simply fetch the value, run a loop, and add them. How? Let me show you. Uh, let me use a variable called sum, which will have a default value as num1 because that's the value you're anyway sending. Now, for the num2, to add that to the sum, I can use a loop and I can say n in num2 because that's a tuple now. So it will give you one value at a time which will go into the n and then you can simply sum it up. So you can say sum, or you can say plus equal to n and that should solve the problem or you can say sum is equal to sum plus n, your choice if you don't want to use the uh, shorthand here and return sum, okay? It's so simple. Now, the logic is not important. If you're getting confused, hey, how that logic works, doesn't matter, you can try it out. What's important for this particular section is we can pass multiple values that will go in num2 as a tuple, and then you can do whatever you want with that tuple, okay? Uh, but still, we need to run this. Let's run this, and you got 22. We can actually verify. So this is 9 plus 6, this is 15, 15 plus 7, 22. Perfectly works. Now, this is called a variable length arguments so we have talked about two things the default arguments and variable length arguments now we have to talk about more things let's start with that now to talk about those things i'm going to comment the entire part i don't want to work with default values and variable length arguments and not even add let's work with some other example let me get a function called person now we are representing a person and you want certain information about the person from the user because that's what you're going to print or maybe you want to save it to database your choice now what values i want let's say two values so one is age and one is name so name and age from for the person and we're not going to do anything fancy i'm just going to print it with a string so i can say name colon and i'm going to print name then i'm going to print the age as well give a colon give a comma and say age so we have this function called person and then we have name age and that is there now now I want to call this as well. So I will say person and logically you have to pass two things. You have to pass a name. I'm going to pass my name and I'm going to pass the age. That's not my age, but that works. So let me create this run and you can see it says Naveen and Tari. That perfectly works. But then why we are working with this example is because what if you don't pass the age, then it will give you some bad words. It will say, what you're doing? Where's the age? then you know how to solve it. You know, maybe you're doing it for the uh, ticket booking of a movie where only adults can attend. Uh, so 18 plus movie or A rated movies. In that case, you can assume the default value for the age is 18 if a user is not passing it. If you're passing it, then of course it will replace with a new value. So if I don't pass the value, I'm going to get 18. That perfectly works. But we have talked about it. So why to discuss now? What extra going to talk about is this. What if I make a mistake and I'm passing the age first and then the name? Now, there's nowhere we are mentioning what type of data we're accepting. So, Tati goes to name, Navin goes to age, and your Python will say, that's okay. I can understand what you're trying to say, but I'm going to assume what you're going to say. So, if you're saying Tati, that should be the first variable. If you're saying name, that goes into age variable, and you can't complain, it's your mistake. Then you will say, hey, I know it, you know, it's there. First is name, then is age, then why I am making a mistake there? It's because maybe this particular function is not there in your file. You are importing a module somewhere, and in that module, person function is defined there. How will you know the code? Okay, and okay, there's one way actually. When you use IDs, it will give you suggestion. So if you say control space, you can say person, or you can just click here. It will give you uh, there are two variables, name and age. You can know the sequence. But mistakes can happen from anywhere, right? So this is the bug, you know. Name should not be Tadi and age should not be Naveen. Now, if you want to remove this bug, what you can do is you can use something called 
a keyword argument where you can mention the first variable which I'm passing is age. The second variable which I'm passing is name. Now you are specifying that the third is age, Naveen is name. Then Python will say, okay, I'm going to look at the person and I'm going to hit a particular variable with the value. So age will be hit by 30 and name will be hit by Naveen. Let's see if that works and that works. Now this thing here is called keyword arguments. Simple stuff, right? Okay, now this thing we know. Uh, so we have talked about default arguments. We have talked about variable in the arguments. We have talked about keyword arguments. But what if you want to talk about keyword variable length arguments and then you will say why we are doing that. So let's say I'm passing this to and I'm, say, I'm accepting this to that perfectly works. But what if I'm passing extra values, something like this. Let's say I'm passing name and then I'm passing age, which is let's say 30 in this case. Uh, I'm going to pass the location as well. And I'm, I'm going to say Pune and I'm going to pass, let's say one more thing, the favorite technology, which I love. And since we are learning Python, I have to say Python. I don't have a choice. So I'm passing all these values. Now, we don't have those variables here. We only got name and age. And if you try to work with this, it will say, what you're doing? You know, we just wanted to, we are passing multiple and there's a keyword argument called location. I don't find it anywhere in the definition. So how do you accept it? Uh, one of the analogy you can assume is, or you can imagine is pizza. So when you buy, when you order pizza online, basically you mention your name and that's compulsory. But apart from it, of course you are ordering pizza. So they will have, they have to give a pizza. But on that pizza, you can mention the toppings, what you want. And there can be one topping or no topping or multiple toppings, 10, 12, 30, your choice. Uh, you know, when you go to Subway, you say, I want all. So if you pass all those values, how will you accept it here? And that's where you can use something called a keyword variable length arguments. Or we can say keyword length arguments. Now, how do you accept it? So first of all, let's remove the variable name age. We can use something called k uh, w length arguments, if that works, whatever variable name. And then on the, at the start, we have to give two stars. Now you will say, why two stars? Why not one star? Because that is already for the variable length arguments. This is two star. We can also do that with single star, right? We can pass multiple values. See, the problem is with when you pass multiple values, you have, when you perform the operation, you should know what that value represent. In this case, I'm specifying this keyword for that, right? So we are specifying this is age, this is location, this is tech. And if you use single star, you can't do that. You can't get the key for it. So these are the keys and these are the values. And the moment you say key values, we remember one thing, dictionary, right? So when you use two star, it creates a dictionary for you. Now I can't print age, but if I try to print the keyword length arguments, let's see what happens. So run and you got name because that's compulsory for the pizza ordering. But the other thing is a dictionary here. Now, how do you fetch the values? You have dictionary, you can print value one by one. You can use a for loop. Uh, it's just that we need two things. One is a key and a value. So I will say K comma V in keyword length arguments. And from them, I want to get the items. Now, once you get the items and one value you get in the key and in a value pair, you can print it. First, I will print K, then I'll give a comma. In this, I'm going to put a colon so that I can differentiate between key value and I'm going to say V. So it will print name and then it will print this particular things. Let's see if that works. Run and it worked. Okay. So you can play with arguments of a function and you can pass multiple things. So yeah, that's about this particular video. See you in the next part. Bye-bye.